What's up guys? My name is Mitch. This is my first YouTube video. Today I'm going to be installing hydraulic steering on this 20 foot wellcraft. I'm going to walk you through all the steps, the removal of the old mechanical linkage and the installation of the new hydraulic linkage. Uh, I'll give you step by step and I'll try to describe this the best way I can. So let's get going. All right. So as you can see with our steering, it turns all the way to the right. free spin and you can see the boat motor will not turn so there's our problem so the first step I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna take the steering wheel off which I got it mocked I used a three-quarter inch half inch drive the steering wheel comes straight off there's a little set piece that just fell this fits in the shaft which actually allows the steering wheel to turn uh, there's two Phillips heads I already have those mocked and off and that brings us to our three bolts down there. We're gonna remove those, and underneath there, there's the housing. Uh, it's a rotary style system, and that's actually what's uh, giving way, is the teeth are no longer catching uh, when you turn it to the left. So that's where it's failing. As you can actually see, the amount of torque that was being put on this steering wheel cracked the wheel. So I may actually have to buy a new steering wheel. You can see the crack there, see a crack, and they run all the way through. So it is actually pretty shot. So. But break out another thousand, right? Good to go. This is super simple, fucking straightforward system. It really is. Okay, so we're working with a half inch. I got a quarter inch or three eighths inch drive. I'm gonna see if this will loosen up at all before I actually go underneath the center console. Not an advertisement, but if you get a chance and you can get yourself a set of drills something of this nature. They make these little hookups. Little 3 8 inch drive. Snaps right in. And now, you don't have to sit there and wrench all day. Much easier. Now, I personally prefer Milwaukee, obviously. Or else I wouldn't have bought all this stuff, but you can get away with anything, really. Bingo. All right. So the next step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and take off these three bolts. <clears throat> There's nuts underneath with washers uh, in the center console. So that's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but I'll walk you through it. Should be easy. So you can see what I'm working with. We're gonna be right up there. Let's see if I can get the phone for you. All right, so I got the old rotary shaft out. Um, just as a tip, Right down there in that little hole. All you have to do is press an Allen key in there. Uh, that releases your cable. Cause you see that little lip? I got a little frustrated and I cheated uh, only because I'm not gonna use this system again. So I took my bolt cutters and I ended up just cutting this. Uh, being my steering shaft was so screwed up. I couldn't get the warm wire out and here we are, so. So I got this string tied up. I use Gorilla Tape. Um, from what I've seen, this is the best way to do it run through. Uh, they said don't slack on the tape. Use more tape than less because if it falls off in the middle of your boat obviously you're going to be a little frustrated. So I got the steering line here pops out over there and what I hope to do is pull the line out and pull the rope through. So that way when I hook up my new lines I pull the lines back through with the rope. What I'm doing now this is the actual, I cheated a little bit. I got ahead of you guys, but just take an adjustable wrench, start loosening this bolt right here, connecting it to the motor. And we're gonna go ahead and take this off. This is what actually connects the steering to the shaft and turns your motor freely. There's that. And now we're gonna take this off. This is working right now. I'm pulling this out. I disconnected this shaft down here. And as you can see, I gotta run it through the motor. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling the slack out with this rope. So anytime I give it a nice tug over here, take the excess slack out. But I may have to resort to a hammer. Alright, so I cheated again. I cut this off with these bolt cutters. I'll come back to this. But for now, we're gonna, you see the rope in front? 
I'm gonna run the rope there. From what I hear, this is one of the more frustrating parts of this job. As you can see, tape held up, rope's still on. Rope's up there. So now all we have to do, now that this is off, I'm gonna continue hitting the engine with a hammer, trying to get this, uh, this whole ordeal off. And then once I get that off, then we're gonna start running the new tubing for the hydraulic system. So it should be good. Got the new hoses taped up. Got the line still running through. I'm gonna start to run the lines through this. Brittany, if you could do me a favor and start running the cord through there. Unfortunately, this is a two-person job. My wife is going to have to help me lead the hose through. I'm going to pull up from the front of the center console. Uh, that way I have a better angle on it, and my wife's going to have to uh, lead the hoses through. So the shaft is going to go through. What I did is I put grease on it. I have aircraft grease at the house because I work on airplanes. But we're going to run this grease through here. And I'll up in a situation where you can't get it in, and you absolutely have to hit it with a hammer, use a wooden block. Put the wooden block at the end where the threads are so you don't distort any threads. Which I may have to tap this in with a mallet. We'll see. The fun begin. So the issue I ran into. I don't know grab it. Transom shaped weird. So my steering shaft is getting caught. It's warping. So I don't really want to sit there and beat on this. So my best option is to actually lift the motor. So the way I'm lifting the motor is I got a ratchet strap, rated at 5,000 pounds, wrapped it around the flywheel to an engine hoist, which me and my wife will be lifting. All right. I've been out in the sun for about 13 hours today. But, as you can see, I have the lines ran. I have the piston installed. I have to actually lift the motor, which you'll see. And the Tomorrow, because I'm not finishing today, uh, I'm going to hook up the lines, hook up the center console, and start pouring the fluid to have about an hour, hour and a half left of work. So I'll get back into it tomorrow, but for today, we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Day two. Uh, so this comes with a cutout that you can put on your center console as a little cheat sheet uh, where to drill. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get it taped up and then we'll get the holes, holes drilled for the new uh, steering setup that they're provided in the uh, U-Flex. I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up and we're gonna drill the new holes for our new steering column. The holes are drilled. diagram explains it is you have two caps you have a red and green and that's the identifiers the one you hook up to the port side obviously port is left starboard is right looking at the front of the boat you're gonna hook the port side up to the starboard attachment so it goes left to right right to left so the right side under the helm or under the center console will go to the left side and the left side under the center console will go to the right side simple as that I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the hoses and I'll let you know when we're adding fluid and bleeding it. So just as a quick tip, leave the cap on, the one you're not gonna install, do one at a time. So for instance, I'm putting the red on the right. I'm gonna go up in the center console, I'm gonna put the red on the left. Once I've got the red on the left, that leaves obviously it's foolproof now at this point. Then I'm gonna put the green on the left and then the green on the right. So do one at a time, that way you don't confuse yourself. Take all the caps off and you're like, wait, which one was which? Uh, can you just take one cord and we can use it as a catch? This is gonna go onto here. Right here's your little bleed nozzle. You hook up a, a tube right here to your bleed nozzle. And obviously the 
left side piston is going to turn the steering right. So you're going to turn the wheel right a bunch of times. Up top, you're going to have a new uh, fluid container. Um, this actually screws in to the steering column. So you screw this in to the top up there where we actually added fluid. Put your new uh, hydraulic bottle and then turn it to the left until all of the bubbles stop. And you're not going to see a single bubble. It'll be a clear stream of hydraulic fluid when you're doing this. And that's how you get uh, the system bled and get tight steering, as you say. And there's two po uh, points, both pointing in this direction. So you don't even have to go to the other side of the boat. Just take the tube off this side, put it right in the center. It's a pretty simple job. Very messy, uh, very aggravating. Uh, you know, when you start spilling hydraulic fluid all over the place, it gets a little chaotic, but there we go. That's a little bit of a messy job, but we're done. There's lock to lock. You gotta check your fitting, make sure anything uh, is leaking. I have a lot of residual fluid solely because I spilled a lot of fluid. Definitely kind of a hectic job, especially when you're only working with your wife. But she helped me. We got hydraulic steering. We're in there like swim water. Thanks for watching. I hope I didn't aggravate the shit out of you guys too much. Uh, I know I did with my wife. She's pretty mad at it, so we'll see if she posts this video.